Hello everyone, I'm Yun Chong. Today I'm going to introduce Merkle Square, a low latency transparency log system. This is a joint work with Kian, Harika, Songjin, and Raluca. To put our work into context, let's first consider the problem with untrusted servers in encrypted systems. So in such systems, they usually will have a PKI server which manages users' public keys. So for example, Bob will put his public key on this PKI server, and later if Alice wants to send a message to Bob, Alice will download this Bob public key from the PKI server and use it to encrypt the message. However, because the server is untrusted, it might be compromised by an attacker. So when Alice look up Bob's public key, the server may reply with a malicious key to Alice. And if Alice uses this malicious public key to encrypt the message, the attacker might be able to uh, decrypt and read the secrets in the message. To solve this problem, people proposed uh, transparency logs. So transparency logs allow users and auditors to monitor the state and the behavior on an untrusted servers. And there are many adoptions in nowadays system. The most famous one is the certificate transparency, which is used to monitor the website certificates. And it turns out that the certificate transparency can help users to detect malicious certificates in nowadays uh, internet. And there are some other transparency logs, such as the key transparency and the software transparency. Okay now, okay, now let me introduce the system's architecture. Uh, I will use one of the prior work as a representative. So in such system, the PKI server will periodically upload a digest which summarizes the current state to the auditors. So the PKI server will divide the time into the epoch, and at the end of each epoch, the PKI server will publish the digest to the auditor. And the auditors will gossip this digest with each other to avoid the equivocation. And suppose the users append a new public key to the server, it will be summarized in the digest of the next epoch, and also will be sent to the auditors. And when Alice uh, retrieves Bob's public key from the PKI server, the p server will also provide a lookup proof. And uh, Alice will do also download the latest digest from the auditors. And by checking the lookup proof and the, the digest, Alice can ensure this is the p public key of Bob. And one important uh, mechanism in transparency logs is monitoring. So each data owner in the transparency logs is responsible for monitoring their own data. So for example, the Bob will periodically look up its own public key on the PKI server. And by checking the lookup proof and the digest from the auditors, Bob is ensured that uh, its own, uh, his own public keys remains unchanged on the PKI server. And because the PKI server will publish multiple digests, so each data owner will monitor every single digest published by the server. And this incurs a very heavy overhead on both user and the server side. So for example, let's assume the epoch interval is one second. Then the Bob will download 65 gigabyte per year just for monitoring its own public key. Uh, and also, uh, because there are multiple uh, users in the system. So for example, if there are 1 billion users, then the server need to provide 65 gigabyte for each of these users uh, to monitor their data. So to reduce the monitoring cost, the prior system uh, usually assumed the epoch interval to be long enough, such as uh, one hour or one day. However, this epoch interval will affect the update latency of transparency logs uh, because the server's new state will not be visible to the user unless it publish a new address. So the low latency and the low latency update is very important for both responsiveness and the user experience. So for example, the user may not want to fit, wait for an hour or a day to revoke their compromised public key. And also, this update latency will affect the actual latency in the application. So for example, in the IoT system, the user may want to deploy their IoT devices as soon as possible. 
And how to reduce this monitoring cost is actually remains a challenging point, a problem in the literature. So many prior work are trying to reduce the monitoring costs, but they either result in high overhead on auditors or a high append and memory costs. So Merkle Square is a low latency transparency log system which simultaneously provides efficient monitoring and low latency updates and uh, at the same time uh, it will maintain the efficiency of uh, append and lookup. Before introducing Merkle Square's design, uh, let me first introduce the use of Merkle tree in transparency logs. And there are two uh, types of Merkle trees in the literature. Uh, and uh, let me first explain the chronological tree. Transparency log is responsible for managing key value pairs. And to avoid the confusion with cryptographic keys, uh, I will refer it as ID values in the rest of the talk. Suppose there are four ID values in the system. Then they will be added into the chronological tree according to the when they are added into the system, uh, as shown in the following example. And finally, the digest will be the root hash of the whole tree. Uh, the benefit of the chronological tree is that it's very easy to prove uh, append only of those leaves between digest transitions. That's because there is a chronological order among these leaves. However, on the other hand, it is very hard to look up by ID efficiently because there is no order according to the ID uh, of the leaf. So prefix tree will manage the data in a different way. So prefix tree will first give an index for each ID. Those index can just be the hash of the ID. And the leaf uh, and the ID values will be added into the prefix tree according to this index function as shown in this example. And if there are multiple values for the same ID, then they will be added into the same leaf node of the prefix tree. And finally, the digest will be the root hash of the whole prefix tree. And the benefit is that it can support an efficient lookup ID according to this index design. But the downside is that it's very hard to prove the append-only property uh, among, uh, between the digest transition because there is no uh, chronological order. So ideally, uh, what we really want is to preserve the properties or uh, the advantages of both two trees. Uh, so some prior work are trying to maintain both trees at the same time. However, so the prior work still need to verify the relationship between two trees, and finally they result in roughly as expensive as using these trees alone. In contrast, Merkle Square leverages a different data structure. It leverages a two-layer design, which is inspired by the multidimensional data structure. As the outer layer is still the chronological tree, which the leaves are organized in chronological order. And in the inner layer is the prefix tree. And the hash of the, the prefix tree will be stored into the internal node of the chronological tree. And each internal node of the chronological tree will store a hash of uh, different prefix trees. Now let's look at the detail. So this is the usual chronological tree. And the difference is that in the Merkle Square, the each internal node of the chronological tree will also store a root hash of the prefix tree. Now let me introduce how to construct the prefix tree. So each prefix tree will be constructed using the leaves inside the subtree of the chronological tree. So for example, this specific prefix tree will use the first and the second uh, ID values to construct because they are inside the subtree of, of inside this specific subtree. 
And uh, similarly, the prefix tree associated with the root node of the chronological tree will use all the ID values to the to construct because uh, all the sub this subtree covers all the ID values in the system. Benefit of this uh, data structure is that it preserves the advantages of both two trees, as I will show in the later protocol. And also, each values is only in log and prefix trees. And the storage uh, panda can also be proven to be very efficient, uh, but please refer to our paper for more details. So now let me explain the uh, monitoring protocol in Merkle Square. So auditor in Merkle Square is responsible for monitoring the digest transition. So whenever the server provides a new digest, it will also provide an extension proof which allows the auditor to compute this new digest using the old digest and the extension proof. And only if the auditors can recompute this new digest, the auditor will uh, accept this digest transition. And this extension proof can be proven to have size log n. Uh, please also please refer to our paper for more details. So. The benefit of this auditor monitoring is that it will preserve the append-only property of the prefix trees. So that means that prefix trees that exist in an earlier epoch will remain the same for all future epochs. But the downside is that the auditor does not actually check the content in the prefix trees, and this may allow the attacker to uh, add malicious content. So to solve this problem, we also leverage the owner monitoring. So each data owner uh, in our, our system will also check the prefix trees that are supposed to store its data. So for example, let's assume Bob want to uh, monitor its own data. Then it will go through the path from the root to that leaf and check all the prefix trees in this path. So the Bob will check these prefix trees actually contain the Bob's value. And also, those prefix trees are indeed included in the whole chronological tree. And this proof is of size log n square because there are at most uh, log n such prefix trees. And each prefix tree may cost log n for the monitoring. The benefit of this uh, owner monitoring mechanism is that the attacker cannot hide the uh, data owner's values without being detected. And also, due to the auditor monitoring, the append-only property is enforced for the prefix tree. So each data owner only needs to check those prefix trees once throughout the, throughout the system life. But there's still some problem uh, because the data owner does not check all the prefix trees. So there are still a uh, possibility for the attacker to add malicious content. So to solve this problem, we introduced the signature chain co-design. Uh, but due to the time limit, please also refer to our paper for more details. Okay, finally, let me introduce how to look up in our system. So suppose Alice still want to have uh, Bob's public key. And the PKI server will maintain a Merkle Square data structure, which uh, will contain a forest of chronological trees. And there might be multiple Bob's public key in the system. And what Alice really wants is the latest one, because all the previous public key are revoked by Bob. And the, what Alice will check is that the Alice will check this is indeed the Bob's public key, so, uh, which is included in the system. Uh, and also it will check uh, there is no other public key is appended after this public key. So it will check in the chronological order this is the latest value for Bob. And this proof uh, can be proven to have size log n square because there are, multi there are at most log n chronological tree in the forest and each prefix tree may cause log n for the lookup. Uh, and we omit some details of the signature chains. Please also refer to our paper for more details. Finally, uh, let me give you some evaluation results. We implement Merkle Square using the Go language and then benchmark it on the Amazon EC2 instances. And uh, we compare Merkle Square with Conex uh, 
according to how many users can be supported by a single server under a real-world workload. And it turns out that Merkle Square's uh, performance are not affected by the epoch interval. And when the epoch interval is one second, it turns out that uh, Merkle Square can support 100 times more users than the Conix. So, in conclusion, Merkle Square is a low latency transparency log system built on top of a new authenticated data structure. And the Merkle Square's technique can be used to build a trustworthy PKI or certificate infrastructure for a lot of encrypted systems. So much for this. Thank you.